What's going on guys? Carter here with Edge Mindset. Uh, got another video for you. We're going to be talking about the differences between the Sabenza 21 right here and the Sabenza 31. I'm also going to be running through some interesting things that have happened in these lines of knives, a little bit of dates and things like that. A little bit of history, nothing too in-depth in case that's too boring. But before we start, uh, thank you everybody who's liked, commented, and subscribed. It really helps me out. It's the only reason that I keep going on these videos is when you guys interact and I see people watching and, and liking my videos. Once that stops, uh, I'll just be done. So uh, thank you so much for everybody that does that. Kind of keeps me going on this stuff, gets me excited and things like that. So why am I making this video? Because this knife is sold. This is the only 21 I have in my collection right now and it's actually just sold. I need to box it up and ship it out. But before I do, I wanted to do a comparison between these two knives. Now, if you're thinking I hate comparison videos, they're so boring, you just go and talk about the little details. We're not doing that today. We're covering the big stuff. We're covering the main differences, or rather the main difference, and then running through how that difference came to be, uh, tell you a few little interesting factoids about the history of CRK, um, in particular, like how this knife came about and how this knife kind of is related to the, this knife. Um, so yeah, it'll be fun. It'll be brief. It'll be a good time. Let's kick it off. So up here we have the Sabenza 21. This knife came out in 2008. This is the Sabenza 31. This knife came out in 2019. So that's the difference. Um, almost 10 years difference between these two knives on when they came out. So I'm not really going to talk pre- 21 history because before this knife you had the uh, regular 21 then or no I think it was classic 21 then regular 21 if we're going back in time and then just the Sabenza so there's a whole history the Sabenza has been out since the 80s so it's gone through a lot of changes the 21 was probably other than the 31 the biggest benchmark change or the most stable benchmark change in a long time this one ran for a very long time the regular and the classic 21 were kind of little blips in the history of Sabenza 21 in relation to the original Sabenza and this 21, if that makes any sense at all. So this is kind of a benchmark knife, right? A lot of people are familiar with this knife. A lot of people owned this knife. A lot of people are collecting this knife because they don't make the 21 anymore. Now, the 31... Uh, is the most recent iteration of the Spenza, and it's probably going to be around for a while. As you can see, there's not a lot of differences between these two. Um, the main one being the lockup, and that's the most critical thing I want to talk about between these two knives. But before we do that, let's do let's just do a quick one over. You can see that the blade shape is nearly identical. The stone washing finish is nearly identical. Placement of the thumb studs, style of the thumb studs, nearly identical. Both of these knives could have came in double thumb studs. Both of these knives could have came in silver, blue, or gold anodized thumb studs. Uh, the profile of the blade is pretty much identical. And they did that for a reason, right? This is the classic Sabenza shape that most people are familiar with. Like I said, you've got some oddballs like the regular 21, which kind of change things up. But this is kind of the overall shape. You can see the chamfering on the titanium scales is pretty much identical. The relief, like everything is very, very similar. Also keep in mind, this has a sandblast finish. This has a glass blast finish. Uh, but the 31 also comes in a sandblast. I don't believe the 21 ever had the glass blasting. I could be wrong. But I feel like glass blasting is a little bit of a newer finish. You can see how it's it's finer. It's not as gritty, not as grippy. Also doesn't mark up as much as the sandblast there. You can see the inlays are very, very similar except for the front one. So they did change the inlays to be a much larger piece right here. I believe the primary driver for that was this hole. But I'm not completely sure because I think they could have covered that up. So maybe it was just... Uh, a decision to change the inlay and make it bigger on the front here. Speaking of the hole, that is a telltale sign of the 21, this hole right here. Uh, the 31 does not have that hole, even without this inlay. Um, I don't, uh, there's not a hole in there. I believe that was left over from the machining that was needed at this time. They needed this hole kind of as a, I forget what you call it, like a, um, uh, 
placement hole, like where they put it in the fixture to do the machining. That's what I've heard. Not 100% sure on that, but that hole is a telltale sign of the Sebenza 21. On the lock side, the only major difference is the pocket clip. The 21, the pocket clip sits on top of the lock bar, whereas on the 31, it's moved over a little bit and it actually is on the frame and the lock bar. Benefit of that is you could apply a bunch of spring tension on this pocket clip. If you want a pocket clip that's like really strong and holds in your pocket very, very well, you can bend this in further and it's not gonna affect your lockup. Whereas on this one, if you bend this in further, it's gonna be pressing on this lock bar and making it harder to unlock. So really in my mind, that's a, that's a really good decision that they did right there to uh, move it to be supported on the frame here so you don't affect that lockup. So you may say, wow, that's not a lot of changes. And that is true. The biggest change is in the lockup. And I will include some photos of the lockup. I don't have time to take these apart on camera, nor would you probably want to watch that. Um, but the 21 is essentially just pure titanium right on that steel tang right there. So it's titanium right on the tang, and then it's got a small ceramic ball detent right in the titanium that just acts as a detent. So nice normal sized ball and that gives this action really smooth vibes like uh, one of the things that the 21 is really known for is how smooth that action is and you feel it 100 percent. it is super super smooth and that's one of the main critiques on the 31 and we'll talk about that here in a second um, they do some treatments on the lock bar they do a heat treating which is basically heating up the lock bar surface to high temperatures, letting it cool, heating it up, letting it cool. And the reason they do that is to create a hard oxidization layer on that titanium so that it doesn't have stick when it interacts with the harder steel. When titanium normally uh, interacts with steel, it can be sticky because titanium is much, much softer than heat treated steel. It can be sticky and it will lead to it eventually wearing out. Uh, so CRK figured out that they can create a hard oxidization layer on that titanium to help slow and prevent that process and reduce the amount of stick that you get. And uh, for example, this one has no stick on it. So then you may be saying, well, what's going on in the 31? Well, the 31 adopted the lockup mechanism that started with the Umnum Zone, which also came out in 2008. So both of these knives, the 21 and the Umnum Zone came out in 2008, but the Umnum Zone had a pretty revolutionary lockup uh, for the time. It was, it was pretty crazy. And what they did is they removed the little tiny detent, ceramic detent ball on the 21, and they replaced it with a giant ball. And they replaced it in a way that that giant ball actually sits up proud from this lock face. So if you compare these two, you can see how there's a bit of a bigger gap here than here. And that detent ball actually is the thing that interacts with this tang. So this titanium is not touching the bottom of that blade there and it's not creating the lockup that giant ceramic detent ball is. And you can kind of see that little track worn right there where that big detent ball moves in there. So why do they do that? For the same reason they heat treated this lock face to re remove stick and make it last longer because now you have really hard ceramic ball interacting with really hard heat treated steel. Um, so it removed the stick and it made the lock bar last longer, especially as we move into high heat treated uh, magna cut type steel. As steels have progressively gotten better and better, the, differ, the difference between the tit soft titanium and the new super steels is getting greater and greater. Back in the day when it was just RWS, oh, I forget what it was, uh, the old steel that CRK used to use, the difference between the blade steel and the titanium was a little bit less than what we're getting now with, with these new super steels. So it's becoming more and more important. And of course, people are wanting less lock stick and less wear and things like that. So you may say, oh, cool. So that lockup started with the Umnum Zong. This is where it was tested and proven out. And then it slowly made its way to the Sebenza leading to the Sebenza 31. There's more to the story than that. We have the Inkosi. And you may say, how is the Inkosi related? Well, because before the 31, there was the Sebenza 25 that came out in 2012. Now, I don't have an example of the 25, but the 25 was basically an Inkosi. So pretty interesting. 
So this was originally called the Sabenza 25, and it was almost identical to this. And it included the Umnumzan giant ceramic ball detent lockup system in the 25. Now, the 25 was not received very well, primarily because it was such a departure design-wise from the 31. It had a more flat type grind on it. It's still technically hollow, but it's a very shallow hollow grind. It had thicker blade stock. It was just more aggressive overall. It was CRK's response to kind of the overbuilt hard use craze that was going on. They created this Abenza 25. They quickly realized that was a bad move because people want the more delicate refined Sabenza. So they changed the name to Encosi and created the 31 in the more classic 21 styling. And so if you can find a Sabenza 25, it's a pretty cool knife to have in your collection. I mean, it, they weren't limited. They were full production runs, but they didn't run for very long. So getting a good example of a 25, uh, once again, this is the Encosi, but it's almost identical. Getting a example of the Sabenza 25 is a pretty cool thing to have in your collection. Uh, just kind of a little piece of history. And it also goes to show uh, companies aren't perfect. Like CRK is kind of known for being very measured in their decisions and what they do and taking their time and proving things out. Uh, but even CRK kind of makes little flubs and that includes the Sabenza 25. It was a bit of a misstep. Probably should have been a whole new model like the Incosi from the very beginning. And then they should have kept the classic Sabenza, at least in design, silhouette, shape, the same. Now, why do some people, I'm kind of jumping back here, why do some people not like the 31? Well, it's because with that giant detent ball and the lock bar pressure needed to make it a secure lockup, it doesn't have that super light action like the 21s did. It's really, really smooth. It still has that hydraulic feel, especially once it breaks in. Uh, but it doesn't, it, it's a little more heavy handed. It doesn't have kind of this really light kind of feathery type feel to it. So a lot of people didn't love that. Now I personally prefer the 31 just because I like the idea of that ceramic ball detent. Basically, I mean, nothing lasts forever, but this lockup will essentially last my entire lifetime, my kid's lifetime. Now the 21 lockup was done very, very well. The angles were done very, very well. But like all titanium, straight titanium lockups, eventually these would wear out. They'd have to go in for service. They would get sticky. They would start to move in more and more until they eventually went all the way over to the other scale. Um, so I like this technology because to me, it's similar to what we're doing with lock bar inserts, but it's a little more graceful. It's a little more uh, refined, well, not necessarily refined, but it's a little more classic of a solution than just taking a piece of steel and screwing it into the lock bar right this this big detent ball and the fact that it essentially solves both issues the lockup and the detent all in just one measure of simplicity i mean super simple it's a giant detent ball pressed in it's just pressed in above this this surface here and it does double duty it acts as the detent right so it keeps the blade closed and then it also acts as the lock interface. So just really cool, very graceful, refined solution to some problems that CRK came up with. And because of that, uh, this is probably my favorite, my absolute favorite out of the two of these, which is why I'm selling this one. All right, comment down below, which one do you prefer, the 31 or the 21? Or do you like them both and care for them equally? All right, guys, appreciate it. Couldn't do without you, wouldn't want to anyways. Take care, I'll catch you on the next video.